Hey, what's up everybody? It's Chris of Digital Realm. And in this video, we're gonna show you the difference between a JPG, a SVG, and a PNG for your brand logo. So if you're getting your brand logo design, but you don't know the difference, your graphic designer is asking like, do you want a vector image or do you care if they're rasterized? Well, you probably don't understand any of these terms, but after this video, you're gonna understand exactly what you're asking for and exactly what you need to enhance your brand and continue to make that content for your brand. So with that being said, we're just gonna hop right into it. Let's go. All right, so we're actually gonna start with just explaining the difference between the three. And then I'm gonna give you some demonstrations of how they are um, how they are differing so you can see exactly how they differ uh, in, the, in, in this video. So with that being said, first I'm gonna just give an overview explanation of what's the difference between a JPEG, PNG, and a SVG. So essentially, a JPEG is more likely what you've heard of before. Usually it's the, the native format that usually you shoot your, you know, on your phone, the picture would come out as a JPEG or things like that. So essentially a JPEG is just like that. It's it's just an image that's a pretty much a universal image, pretty much like a universal remote control, if you want to say, but a universal image that can be used anywhere. Only downside to a JPEG is there is no transparency. So you won't have transparent areas. You're more than likely, it will just be a white background wherever your transparency would be. So again, you don't have that transparency channel where you can see through your graphic. I'm gonna explain this in a second, in a, in, on my screen in a second. So with a with a PNG is very very similar to a JPEG, but it allows transparency. So again, it has that same universal use feature as far as JPEG, but it's just more. Uh, it has that transparency channel that allows you to you know create stickers with it, create T-shirts with it, create brands with it, create you know graphics with it, have it overlay a graphic with uh, things in the background. So that PNG allows you to do that very very powerful tool. And again, it's just like JPEG. It's a universal universal codec and a codec being like file type, but a universal codec that you can pretty much upload to your profile picture. You can you can put it more than likely anywhere will take a PNG. So PNGs are very, very powerful. And when I'm speaking to my clients, I'm always tell them like instead of using instead of using jpegs always use pngs always 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 use pngs for all of your graphics i personally think they're just a little crisper than a jpeg but again i might have a bias so with that being said those are the difference between your jpeg and png now you might have heard terms like vector out there in the out there in the raw wild west and you're like what is a vector what's a vector image and why does why when i get a logo design they ask me if i have a vector vector version of it or vector and like what does this vector mean vector is essentially is, um comes in two different formats or well, a couple different formats but two, usually two different formats either eps or svg svg is usually uh what i what i usually use but SVG stands for scalable vector graphic, so it makes it easier to remember. A scalable vector graphic, and essentially, a SVG takes the image and bases it off of shapes instead of assigning pixels like an actual JPEG or a PNG would. So now, just envision this. We're gonna have to just take a step back and try to envision this. So, if you have a shape, and I will show you in a second, but if you have a shape let's say a, a, a square, let's just call it a square, and you have a, a square that's on the on a TV. There's a square on a TV, and each, each, individual, each individual pixel on the TV, let's say it's a 1920 by 1080 TV, each individual pixel is assigned a color value. So whatever's in that square, it might be black, and whatever's out of that, outside of that square might be white, which make, makes up that image. Like each, each individual pixel or each individual dot has an assigned color to it, okay? So stay with me. That's a JPEG where the color's assigned to the actual pixel. So if you try to scale it up or turn that, that 1920 by 1080 picture into a you know 4K picture or even, you know, put it as a bill or make it one, you wanna create it where it's a billboard or on the side of a building, projected on the side of a building or something crazy like that, more than likely because you're trying to scale up that pixel, so you that one pixel that was assigned, you're trying to make that pixel bigger, it's gonna make your image blurry. You probably experienced this like when you have a picture on your phone, um, even though phones are a little more advanced now, but when you have a picture on your phone and then you uh, try to 
increase it or, you know, um, scale it up or zoom it in, and then it starts to get blurrier and blurrier and blurrier, the more, the bigger you make it. It's the same exact thing because that pixel is assigned a value. So when you scale it up, it's just making that pixel actually bigger. And that's just creating, you know, creating a blurry effect as far as the image quality. So your image quality is reduced in quality. It's not as sharp because, again, that pixel is being blown up to a bigger size. So, again, in an extreme case, think of, like, Mario. Mario is, uh, like, Super Mario, the, um, the like, original Nintendo game. There were, like, eight big, eight big uh, characters where again a pixel was like a big you could tell what a pixel looked like because it was like this big square same similar fashion the smaller you make those the sw smaller you make those squares the more the more sharp that actual edge looks so again just take that uh, um take that analogy into consideration like mario is very very blocky because in order to run a video game they didn't they couldn't assign you know a lot of pixels for it to be real time so i'm trying to stay i'm trying to stay high level where it's not confusing but hopefully you stay with me here right so with a scalable vector graphic which more than likely your designer is going to ask for but with a vector graphic it's based off of the shape so the shape of the box is more important so with that shape it can scale across it can it's just going to be based off the shape so you can scale that shape but it's just going to reassign the pixels it's going to reassign a value to the new pixels that that shape overlays. So again, if you have a, a shape and you're, the shape is at 1920 by 1080 in one shot, but then you're like, I want to scale this shape up to a 4K image, it's just going to scale up but reassign new pixels to within that shape. So it keeps the same crisp edge as it, as it had before. But again, it's... it's, it's um, it's a it's based off of a shape and a lot of math involved but again it's based off a of shape instead of a pixel now if you want to get real if you want, I don't want to call it nerdy but if you want to get really nerdy the pixel based the pixel based uh, assignment where when you scale it up and blow it and, you know scale it up and make it smaller scale it up and stuff like that that's called a rasterized image rasterized image being ba basically it's assigning pixel values. It's assigning an RGB value, a color value to each individual pixel that'll make up the make up the image. Again, vectors are based off of shapes, so you're gonna have those those shapes that make up the image. So it doesn't matter how big or small you make it, it's just gonna reassign the value of the pixels that that shape is within. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I was kind of clear on that. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it super, super high level for just a beginner, just like, just to understand. Cause again, if you're a brand owner, if you're, you know, you're not a designer, but you know, you, you know what you need for your brand, you know, what kind of graphics you need for, for your brand and some things you don't know. This is just, this, this is just giving you some insight on what you would need when hiring out your graphic designer when you're hiring out to get your logo created some of the things that you would need so with that being said now we're going to hop onto the screen and show you the difference in real time of what the difference between a um a rasterized image a rasterized image being a jpeg or png and the and a difference between a vector image and if you and also we are also going to point out for everybody who's watching Creator Academy right now, we're also going to point out what you would look for when you are getting your logo design. The things that you look for, the pitfalls that you want to avoid when getting your logo design. We're going to cover that also in this lesson. So with that being said, let's just hop right onto the screen and let's get it cracking. Boom. All right. So this is my desktop here, right? First, we're gonna first we're gonna start with we're gonna start by opening Photoshop. So you can we can just get a get a program that's pretty much that's pretty much gonna allow us to show you in real time more how this works, how how this technology works, and then it will help you even further understand how you need to position yourself when when getting your um or position your ask when getting your graphics done for your brand now there is there is a workaround as far as when you have when you only are limited to jpegs like if you're doing photography or you're doing you know or you're doing videography or something like that there is a workaround that allows you to keep that crisp crisp look but um 
it not be vector. So we're gonna talk about that as well. And that's why it's very, very important to a lot of this technical stuff, you at minimum need to know to get started. So as we're waiting on Photoshop to open, this is coming to kind of some of the things that you need to think of as you are building your brand. And if you're doing it yourself, as far as you're part of Creator Academy, if you're doing it yourself, these are some of the things that you need to consider when actually creating content for your brand. So it'll make it'll make your life easier and you'll, you can further understand why your image quality doesn't look where you know you envision it how how to make it how to make it better at the end of the day so we're gonna just open a new file we're not gonna do anything crazy let's open a new file we're gonna do a a quick um let's just do a 1920 by 1920 right just a square 1920 by 1920 so well, you you might be asking like Chris, what you know? How did you come up with this number? Let me actually show you over here. I, it's a custom one for me, but how did you come up with this number, right? We're gonna create that. You might be asking Chris, how did you come up with this number, nineteen twenty by nineteen twenty? Usually, pick. I want to say more more than likely you've heard of a TV size being 1080, like a 1080p TV or something like that, right? We all heard 4K, but 1080 is usually the, the, the standard as far as the universal standard currently for a lot of the media that's going on. So again, social media, um, um, TVs, things like that, if it's not 4K, it's more than likely a 1080p. So 1080 by 1080, 1080 being how many pixels? across your screen, across your screen, usually if you're watching this Creator Academy from the digital rim all the way over to the other side, that is a 1080, 1080, 1080 pixels, individual pixels, they make up the across that screen, and then, or, blah, 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 that make up the vertical part of that screen, and then 1920, that make up the, the cross, area of that screen so if i'm looking right here it'll make up that cross area of the screen so the 1080 makes up the vertical how many pixels this way 1920 makes up how many pixels this way right so we have a we have an image that's currently um what did i say 1080 by 1080 so we're basically just creating a square from that actual value and hopefully hopefully y'all are staying with me with this right so let's start with a JPEG, right? Let's start with a JPEG like this. I'm gonna pull it in here. I'm not gonna pull it in into the 1920 by 10, I mean, 1080 by 1080 yet, but I'm gonna pull it in here. So this JPEG is saved out as at the size of this is a JPEG, and this is the low. This is what kind of I was alluding to before the hack. This JPEG is saved out to the size of, put it in pixels, 4,167 by 4,167 at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch, right? So that's gonna be way bigger, way bigger as far as the, the image size than a 1920 by 1080, 1080 video. So in essence, you can pull this in, it's gonna be way bigger and you're gonna to have to shrink it down. But that's the key. If you, have a, if you have an image that's way bigger than the actual final finished product or the final product and you scale it down, you won't lose quality. If you have an image that's smaller and you try to scale it up, then you're gonna lose quality. That's the key, that's the, that's the gem inside of this whole thing. If you have an image that's bigger, you can always scale it down and you won't lose quality. It'll actually, I don't wanna say it becomes more crisp, but you won't lose quality. But again, if you have a smaller image and you try to scale it up, you will lose quality. So we're gonna actually, we're gonna actually show you an example of that, right? This, this image right here is, again, let's go back to the size, image size. This image right here, Pixel wise, 4,167. So let's say, let's say that, you know, you, you had a graphic designer 
create a graphic for you, right? And they gave you an image that's 500 by 500 pixels, right? Well, just for the for the sake of for the sake of for the sake of demonstration, we're gonna do 150. And 150 is usually what you would get for like if you were creating a the you know a the designer a web a designer for a web would create for a thumbnail size or something like that a small fault uh, a small file size so they can put it as a thumbnail so again we'll just do 150 by 150 right it's going to resize this real quick and you see it made it significantly smaller than we had before right this is a JPEG, and a PNG would do the same exact thing. I'm just giving you an example of what a rasterized image is, right? And if you zoom in, even if you zoom in and as the quality of this screen, as I zoom in, you can even see, you can see the pixels, actually. You can see those little, those little squares are pixels. These pixels are assigned a value. On the edge, it's giving a value of like gray, variations of gray because it's trying to figure out that edge. So again, if you have more, it's going to be more defined, right? You have less, it's going to be less defined. But you see, it starts to get, it starts to get grainy. And if you don't believe me, right? Watch this. We're going to take that same image and we're going to put it into our 1080 by 1080, right? Now we're going to scale that up. We're going to say, okay, Chris, designer, I, I have this, I have it, and this has happened to me before. That's why I'm even creating this video. But I, I have my logo. I'm going to send you over my logos, right? And then, and then you send over the logos, not realizing about, like, the dimension, the size of your logo, things like that, The J, it being a JPEG. I'm sending over my logo. Can you create a flyer of it? Or can you create a, a banner for my, my, my website for it, right? And then I get in here and like, all right, I'll create a banner. And then I move it to scale it up. And then look how blurry that is. Like, look how blurry. And you might even need a comparison. Like, I'm going to pull that. I'm going to pull that other one back in, too. But you might even need a comparison so you can see. I see it clear as day. But you might not be able to even see it clear as day. So I'm going to do a side by side. Right? You see the side by side? One is just what this is the one on the right is the one that is the image quad the image size is way bigger. The one on the left is the image size is way smaller. So it's kind of like if you try to scale up, it's gonna end up being blurry. Those edges aren't gonna be as crisp. If you if you have it a big size and you just bring it down, you're gonna keep those crisp edges. You're gonna keep that, and you can the the fact that this is um the fact that this one is so much bigger, you can pretty you have a lot of leeway before it actually starts to look blurry, right? You have a lot of leeway. This is this one is still more crisp than the one that we scaled up, right? So again, when you when you have a JPEG, keeping that in mind, like keeping that in mind, like what size is this? And you might be asking, like, how do I find out the size of it if I don't have if I don't have Photoshop or something like that, right? If you go to your file, if you go to your file and just click, right click it, well, you can just hover over it, really. If you go to your file and hover over it, you see it says 4,160 by 4, the dimensions 4,160 by 4,160, just like that. Like, let me take off the right click. You just hover over it. 4,160 by 4,160, right? I mean, 167, you see it, all right? So boom, that's how you find out the size of it, right? Again, keep it in mind, like use, use 1920 by 1080, regular TV size as your rule of thumb, right? At minimum, have the designer create your graphic in 1920 by 1920, even though I this is 1080 by 1080, but 1920 by 1920, have them create your JPEG in that, at that size right and it should be good to go so this is for jpegs now you might be asking like okay we talked about jpegs that's that's jpegs but what's the difference between a jpeg and a png 
because they sound similar. They sound like they're the same exact thing. And as you probably noticed, there's a lot, there's an area inside of this, inside of this image that we don't need. Like the image really consists of the, the black here, the blue, the black. Most of this white area is just like, what if we want to put this over another image? What if we want to put this over a picture or something like that? And we we don't want the white area around it. That's where PNGs come to play. Even though, again, it's that same rasterized technology that we're talking about, like you have to make your image bigger so you can scale it down instead of vice versa. But it also includes alpha channels. So we're going to pull in a PNG now. PNG is the is the type of file file type, right? We're gonna pull in a PNG now. And again, the PNG has the same versatility as a JPEG. So you'll be able to upload them as you know profile pictures and things like that. But see now on this PNG, I can actually see it it lines up and it doesn't have this square around it. Let me just turn this other one off. It doesn't have that square around it. Where you see that, where you see the checker pattern, that's transparency. So again, you can put an image, you can put this over an image, you can put this over anything, and you will have that transparency to go on it. JPEGs, you don't have that ability. It will, it will always give you that white border. It will always, it doesn't have the ability to add transparency in its file. So you won't be able to do transparency in a JPEG. You will be able to do it in a PNG, right? Super, super important. Super, super important, right? Okay, I get it. I get it, Chris. I get it. I get the difference between a PNG and a JPEG, right? So what is a vector? What is a vector graphic? I don't understand, like, why, why is it necessary to have a vector graphic, right? When we talked about it, we talked about it just a second ago. So I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. But so a vector graphic is all the way on the other spectrum of a JPEG, right? JPEG is JPEG is like, you know, on the lower spectrum, if you want to call it a spectrum. PNG is in the middle because it's like mixing the technology of a JPEG and an SVG. It's just rasterized. It's not an actual vector. Now we're going to go into what a vector is, right? And again, you could, more than likely, you could pull a vector into, that's not the one I want. You could pull a vector into any program that does graphics, right? And you might be looking like, hey, the vector looks just, the vector looks just like the PNG, right? Again. Same exact technology. We're gonna. I'm gonna hide this. One. I'm gonna hide the JPEG now. We. I think we get that right. This vector looks almost identical to this PNG, right? Almost identical because the PNG was able to add the alpha channel. The main difference between the vector is the vector has the has the ability to be scaled because it's based off of shapes. So, let's give a demonstration of what that what that looks like, right? It's going to take a second to get there. Give me a second. I'm going to have to pull this up in Illustrator, right? Give me a second to pull up Illustrator real quick. Let's take them real quick. Here we go. All right.
Boom. All right. So vector, like I was saying before, make sure we good. All right. Like I was saying before, I'm going to put this JPEG back on just so we can keep it here. We have JPEG here. We have, I'll say this is PNG. SVG, right? Yep. We'll just do left to right. Like so. So, JPEG on the left, as you see, it has the white board around it. PNG on the on in the middle, which it does, it has a transparency, and uh, SVG is on the right side. But now we're gonna go into what's the difference between an SVG and a PN or yeah, SVG and a PNG, right? So SVG, like I said, is based off of shapes. It's not a sign of pixel value. Like this JPEG down here, you can tell it's getting blurry because those pixel values are assigned. And you could, we could zoom in and it'll start to show the pixels, right? You can see each pixel is assigned a value and these gray ones are kind of gray. So again, if you scale it up, they're gonna end up looking more like this, right? Those gray pixels are just going to be, become bigger blocks, right? And it's going to try to figure out what the, what the actual value of those pixels are. So that's why you want to start off with a larger image, right? But with that being said, I just had to do a little backtrack. Images are based off, so you can essentially grab a vector image, and I'm going to show you what a shape is. You can grab a vector image and you see how it has these like handles and these points and anchor points. You can change the value of that shape. So now new these pixels start to be assigned black. These pixels start to be assigned white, right? So it's based off of the shape. So now with that with that that understanding, if you scale this whole thing up, it's just going to reassign reassign new values to the pixel that it overlays it'll have that information so it's based off of the shape where the assignment of the actual pixel value will lie instead of a rasterized image being like the pixel value is assigned when you save it out or export it out as a jp jpeg or a jpg or a png it's already assigned and once you scale it up it's going to try to calculate that but it's not going to do a great job instead of keeping its shape and just reassigning values based on the shape, right? Boom. Simple as that. Like, that's the really the bare bones of what the difference between a JPEG, a PNG, and an SVG is. Now, with that being said, now I'm, now I'm speaking to all of my, all of my brand owners who are very passionate about their brand, but they don't know anything about graphic design. This is, if you want to say a case, if you want to say a case study or a, a, a something I've experienced as a designer, as as brand owners come to me like, hey, I I I have a, I want to do a design, I want to do this for my website or this for my brand or establish a style guide or whatever the case may be. I want to do this thing. I had somebody create my logo off of a platform. Or online platform I'm not gonna name any but off of an online platform they gave me multiple you know they gave me JPEGs and gave me this gave me that can you work with it and they'll give it to me of course as a designer and I'm like man you don't have any vector graph you don't have any any vector images like at minimum at minimum you're Designer, your graphic designer should be providing you with a vectorized version of your actual logo. So more than anything, if you're paying for services for somebody to do it, have them provide a vector version of your logo.
Now, with that being said, because you're more familiar, you're gonna know what to ask for, and I'm gonna even go even further into this, right? They'll be like, okay, I will sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but be weary of, they will ask you, how would you like your vector image? Again, more than likely, you don't have the software to open up a vector image. So again, they'll ask you like, how do you want your vector image? Either an illustrator file, which we're looking at right here as an illustrator file, which usually will have a vector image inside or SVG or something like that. Now, I also want to point out, right? Because you don't have, more than likely you won't have an illustrator or anything like that. I don't know the best, best way to check this, but you definitely, definitely, definitely want to try to find a way to check this um, you can actually, there's a good way you check this. You can go, you can go to and download a open source software called Inkscape and import it into Inkscape. It's very similar to, similar to Illustrator, but it's free and you could check it that way, right? It's called Inkscape, right? It's ink, ink, like ink for a pen, scape, uh, like landscape, but scape, Inkscape, right? But what what I'm saying is, it is possible, and I've seen I've seen a current this happen before, which I was I kind of felt bad for the client, but I was like, you know, I can't do anything about about it besides create your create a vector version of your logo, but it is possible. So you want to be mindful. You can drop, you can drop PNGs and JPEGs into an Illustrator file and save out an Illustrator file. Even though you do that, you still won't have the ability. It's still based off a. It's still based off a rasterized image, right? It's still based off a rasterized image, so you won't have the ability to change. You won't have the information that the shapes usually come with, right? See, that's a shape. You won't have the shape values because it's right. It's just an image. Again, that's very shady for any designer to do, but you need to be mindful of, because I've seen it happen before. So you need to be mindful of like, hey, is this an actual vector image? Can I go in there and grab the handles on the anchor points and grab the things to manipulate the shape or change the color values? Like, again, once you have it vectorized, you can go in here, you can go in here, grab the shape that you want, you know, change colors if you want based on the shape like you can change colors just based on the shape so again it's very shape based and you want that file you want that file that allows you to be able to do that it'll either come in svg or svg or uh eps or ai as a as adobe illustrator either one of those you'll be able to get your vectors but again be mindful that you know sometimes when hiring hiring the wrong people you could run into they just drop the jpeg or the png into the actual file format and then give it to you like here you go here's a vector format not no, knowing that you don't know the difference and you don't have the ability to check the difference so you just want to be mindful of that uh first and mainly be super mindful of that now with that being said one thing that sets that sets us apart digital realm apart and this is something that you're learning here in the creator academy right now but one of the things that set uh, sets us apart from other designers well let me take a backtrack chris why you might be asking yourself chris why would why would a graphic designer why would he want to or why would he put a jpeg into an illustrator file uh into an illustrator file knowing that I want to grab vector or design my logo and not make it a vector logo or whatever the case may be. Why would he do that? Right? I'm a, just making an assumption. There's multiple reasons why they would do that. One of the reasons why the image was probably generated by AI. The image was, the logo was generated by AI. They only can export out or save out a JPEG. So they save out the JPEG, show you the JPEG. You like, I love it. Then they are like, can I get the, the vector file for it? And they're like, well, they know they don't have the vector file, but again, well, and again, they'll try to, I don't gonna say, cause I've never been in a situation, but I would assume they will just try to be like, oh, you, what you just wanted an AI, an AI file. 
like and not be like and not really know that you know that no you want the file that has the shapes inside of it like you want the file that has the shapes where we can change up the shapes and it's based off of shapes we want an actual vector image not of not a not a file that is usually used for vector images no we want the actual vector image so again um that's one thing that they probably do another thing is again they're 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 I don't know many. I don't know many other instances, but again, they're probably getting their they're get they're generating their images from some type of tool they're using that's only giving them JPEGs. So they can't they can't create a vector file. They can if they work, but they can't create a vector file based on how they're actually generating the logo. Now, again, in essence, if you have a real graphic designer, they're going in and they're actually building it in vector form from the beginning. From the from the very beginning because they know that this is going to allow them to work faster on the back end so if you're like hey i want to i want to vary this type of variation or this type of variation we're about to get into this in a second but i want it like this and i want it like that very very important so let's just hop right into that like the other the other thing you want to look for when having graphic design made or having your logo designed right other thing you want to look for besides now that you understand what the SVG is, you want a vector, you want it in PNG, and you possibly even want a JPEG. But the PNG and JPEG formats, you want big. You want them huge. Like, you want them super huge. So keep that in mind. JPEGs and PNGs, you want them super huge. The SVG, it, it doesn't matter because, it's again, it's, it's scalable. It's a vector graphic. It's scalable. It's not going to lose the quality, right? So we're going to... Should we get out of this? Uh, we'll... Oh yeah, no, we're not going to get out of this yet. So one of the other things you want to consider when actually, when you get your logo design or when you're designing your logo, if you're in Creator Academy, we already kind of went over some how to design, how to use Illustrator and things like that. And if you have more questions, just chime in uh, to the community, right? When you're getting your logo design, this is one of the, these are the primary things that you want, right? Again, I ran into this with clients, like they'll have their logo design. And I'm like, okay, where are the variations? What do you mean variations? I just have a small one. I have a small one. I have a big one. And, you know, I have a small one. I have a big one, two JPEGs, right? I'm like, man, I have to rebuild this. You know, whoever your designer is has to rebuild this because it's, 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 it's a piece of artwork that you were given. But at the end of the day, you need a tool. You need your, you need your brand's tool. Again, think of your logo as the tool. Like you need the tool. You don't need a art. You don't need artwork of the tool. You need the actual tool so you can put it in multiple places and use it in multiple in multiple ways. So you need the actual tool. So don't get caught up with thinking it's just artwork. These are tools that you're going to use in multiple ways. So with that being said, when you have your logo design, you want to have a PNG version a JPEG version and an SVG version, as you see here. A PNG version, a JPEG version, SVG version. Chris, why do you have these three different versions? Why do you have these three different file types, right? I kind of told you already, like JPEG is kind of universal. PNG is very universal with transparency. SVG is not universal. You can't upload it everywhere, but it allows you to export out into PNG and SVGs, I mean, JPEGs and PNGs later on after you make changes, right? So, also with that being said, you're going to have your primaries, right? Your primaries being like your base, your, your base logo design, right? Your base logo design, your, your primaries. Let's say this is a prime, this is a, this is a, a digital rim primary that's considered a digital rim primary right we're gonna we're gonna get it now that we uh, now that we understand with uh, uh vector is we're gonna get out of this so i can show you this part without my chugging like this right so we have a primary with your primary which are with along with your primary Pull that back up. Along with your primary, you want to have a secondary. 
Chris, what's a secondary? A secondary logo is a logo that's pretty much almost the inverse of your primary logo. As you see, where it's dark, it's light. Where it's light, it's dark in this one. And we keep the primary color, our primary brand color, right? Chris, why is this important? Like, why would somebody care about this? Why would somebody care to have these two different versions of their logo? Again, this is your this is your logo designer's job. At the end of the day, this is their job to do this, right? I'm gonna show you why, right? Let me finish all of the variation. I'm gonna show you exactly why it's super, super important for them to do this. So you have your you have your alternate. You, you have your primary, you have your alternate being like your inverse, right? You want to have a black version. You want to have a white version. Uh, come in. You want to have a white version. Boom. All right, Chris. What? Okay. Now you just, now you just really, I don't know where you're going with this. Like what, what's the purpose of having all of these different looks of your logo? Why would I need this? All I wanted was, Chris, all I wanted was a logo. Like, you, you're you throwing a lot in here. Like, is this all of this necessary? Yes. Simply put, yes. It's all necessary. All of it. All of it's necessary, right? Why is it necessary? Let's say down the line. Like, down the line. Do this. Let's just do this quick. Quick. I was going to try to pull an image in which I still can, but let's say down the line, you're like, you know what, I'm gonna create a, I wanna create a graphic for my, for, um, to post online, uh, uh, Instagram post or whatever. I wanna create a graphic or a, a video under, overlay my logo over a video or whatever the case may be. And your graphic, your image, your image is, let's say, Let's say your image is white, right? Well, it doesn't really work well for the alternate logo, right? As you see, our shape is pretty much lost there. Our mask one is pretty much lost, but again, the contrast for the black logo is popping. The contrast for the primary logo is popping. Okay, let's inverse this. Oh, you have a darker, you have a darker scene, you know, a darker whatever. And now your inverse logo is popping. Your white logo is popping. So again, you might be as like Chris, that I would never have, you might be thinking, I would never have like a full black or full white, white um, image, right? I'm going to go find, I'm going to just go on the wild, wild west of the internet and find something, right? Not that. I'm gonna go just find something, right? Let's do, uh, let's do, uh, background, just put, I'm gonna just put background. Desktop image. We call it screen savers. That's what I was thinking of, screen saver. But let's say it's something like this, right? Say so something like that. Boom, drop it in there, scale it up. 
right? Let's just say it's, let's just say we're just make we're just, this is just a quick example, right? It's an example, right? As you see, this image is mostly dark. This image is mostly dark. So the white version of this, white version of our logo is going to pop off the screen more because this image is mostly dark. Again, in, in, in contrast, if the image was mostly light, I'm going to just put the overlay over here, right? I'm going to just add, the, add an overlay. And again, you can increase it. I'm just putting that black over and just turn up the turning up and down the opacity. And you see the more we turn it up or down, the more it'll get pushed back into the back, right? But let's say we make that white. So we want this to be lighter. Now the black version pops. Again, this is an example just like if you were, if you were, if this was a photo of you or a photo of something, well, now you have the variations for your actual logo to apply to that. Super, super, super gem. Any low, any real logo designer, any strategic designer who understands design would know to give you all of these different assets so you can build, so you can build more and more graphics. And these assets not only lie in graphics here, these can be these can be transitions, alpha channels for animations, things like that. Again, that's why it's very, very important, especially with the vector graphics. Now you can take, I'm just giving you an example, but you could take that actual SVG, create layers in After Effects and bring things in separately because they're all their individual shapes. They're all their own individual shape, shapes instead of one image that's one image at the end of the day, right? So more than anything, as long as you get a, a real SVG, you can create a JPEG, you can create a PNG, you can create all of this stuff, but you want to create your, you want to get your logo created as an actual SVG or vector logo, a real vector logo. Don't get, don't get bamboozled by somebody putting a, a actual rasterized image inside of a vector file, right? Cause they know you won't know the, they know you probably wouldn't know the difference, right? So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you an example of even why these are super important, right? So the black, right? It's just a you're like, oh, why would I need a black version, right? I give you two I'll give you two reasons why you can use how you can use this. Boom. One one way is as a mask, right? This logo, this this shape can now be a mask. And I know you you might be you might be new to this, and you might be like, "What's a mask?" And I'm, I'm give me a second, you'll you'll understand in a second. Boom. Now remove this. Boom. As you see, now it's a mask. That image, and even make it even make it even easier for you to understand. Boom. Now it's a mask where essentially that shape, you were able to take that shape and everything that was black in this shape, in this one, everything that was black, you're assigning an alpha channel to. So it's saying, okay, whatever's black in this image is going to be transparent. Whatever's well, at the end of the day, really was whatever selected because it's a PNG, but whatever selected is going to be transparent. As you see the little marching ants, it's going to be transparent. So uh, assign that to whatever layer you want and you can have an alpha channel where it's like you're seeing, it's like a glass or you're seeing through it at the end of the day. So you can create graphics just like this based off of solid white images, solid black images, whatever the case may be. But I'll just give you a quick example. If you're something like that, but hey, this is animated now. Let's say this is animated now, right? We're transitioning from a one scene to the other. You know what I'm saying? Even though I can't, we're not setting keyframes, but I'm just doing it by hand. But just imagine like 
You're going from one scene to the other. It, it comes in and transitions to the next scene. And, that, and then, you know, this fades off now. Where now it just looks like this, right? You can do all of that stuff if you have the actual proper files to do so, right? All the proper files to do so. Super, super simple, right? Uh, I was going to, that's one. You can do that with either white or black. It really doesn't, as far as creating an alpha channel. Again, I know you, you, you're probably, you're probably not going to do this part, do all of that. But at the same time, understanding like, okay, if you're able to do that, now I, now as a business owner, as somebody who's interested in getting their logo creator, things like that, you know what to ask for. Like, you know what to ask for. I want a black version, I want a white version, I want an alternate version, I want my primary version, I want them all vector. And I want JPEGs and PNGs, if possible, of all of it. So, and that should be your logo package. It shouldn't be one image that you have. It should be a, a package, um, at the end of the day, a package of all your graphics. I wanted to, I had another example of how I wanted to use this too. We had the white version. Let me put, just pull it up, I'll probably remember real quick. We have the white version. What we're we gonna do with this? That that pops right there. That's popping right there. And again, it's just based off of it's just based off of the contrast, like that contrast, because it's a dark image, it just makes it look way better. And again, your designer now, because they have the actual things that they can use. They can go in here and really just get creative with what you, what you want design, right? Uh, I want to say I was going to do something else, but I can't think of what I was going to do. But I think you get, get the point. Like, these are, these are the things that you want, brand. These are the elements that you want for your brand. Once you have these elements... More than likely, if you are a new designer, a thing like that, you're gonna drop them into Canva. You're gonna drop these same elements into Canva and pretty much be able to create the graphics around these elements, just like that. So boom, there it is. You got to see exactly how I highly, 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 highly suggest you reach out to your logo designer when you get your logos created, be like, hey, this is what I need. Now I know what I need. At first, maybe you went in there thinking like you're getting a picture, like something that you were getting in high school, like, hey, can you create me a nice picture to go with my brand? No, you're wanting them to create an actual vector graphic so you can, at the end of the day, create even more creative stuff by, by having variations of your logo for your brand. So with that being said, hey, hopefully this inspired you to do that one thing that takes you closer to your goals, like I always say. Like I always say, do that one thing that takes you closer to your goals. Um, and watch the next video as far as, um, as far as, I want to say we did the vector graphic already for the t-shirts. So you can understand more about the vector graphics. Um, if you go in and watch the t-shirt video, how to design for a t-shirt in Illustrator, you can understand how to develop your own vector graphics uh, if you want to do it for yourself. But again, like I said, if you're having, if you're hiring somebody to do your actual graphics, to do your actual logo, to create your logo, Make, 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 make sure. You don't just ask for that JPEG because it's $50, $75, whatever the case may be. No, you need the whole kit and caboodle. You need the, you need the vector version of it. You need the black and white version of it. You need the, the primary version of it. You need the alternate version of it. You need the, you need the long version of it. You need the square version of it. You need the, 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 the uh, icon version of it, you need all of these different versions because you use all of these different versions when you are establishing your brand. Again, like I said, the icon, that would be a simply where you put the little image that goes where your thumbnail is, right? Or where your, where the, the tab is for your uh, web browser. So when people go to your website, that little image that puts up as a tab, your little icon, different things, it makes it super, 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 super easy on the back end when you start to actually implement things for your brand. Because again, you can find yourself running the hamster wheel if you don't have these, especially if your logo designer provided you with a low resolution, small file, 
JPEG as a logo. And as a somebody who doesn't know any better, you were like, this is perfect. But at the same time, from somebody who, a graphic designer, it's like, you give it to them, like, can you create something from this? They're like, no, I can't because it's low resolution. How are we gonna make a billboard with your face on it with this logo? Cause it's gonna look super blurry. Like you got all of this professional photography, but your logo is gonna be super blurry. That doesn't look good. You need the vector version of your logo. So that's just a quick example. And that's why if you if you aren't in Creator Academy and you're 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 still stumped on just trying to figure this out, you can hire us all the one of the creators from creator academy but you can hire us from digital rim to pretty much help you with the process of creating this vector graphic for your brand so with that being said hey do that one thing i already said it but i'm gonna say it again do that one thing that takes you closer goes and all with that said with that being said <laughs> all y'all have a nice day lady y'all peace